In early June, I was faced with a serious problem. With Poplio Community Day looming, I had basically zero Poplio footage. Without footage, I was unable to make a Poplio excellent throw guide for this channel. To make matters worse, Poplio wasn't spawning in the wild and hadn't spawned for a long time. And yet, I found a way to record 10 excellent throws on Poplio before Community Day and was able to create the excellent throw video. How? It turns out that in Pokemon Go, there are a couple of techniques that if used correctly can be considered sorts of practice mode. One of these techniques allows attempting a practically unlimited number of throw attempts on a Pokemon, while the other allows attempting throws on Pokemon that may not be spawning right now, or may never be available to catch it at all. As practice modes for regular players, these techniques are probably not practical enough to be very useful, but they are an actual game changer for a channel like this one, especially when used in combination. So naturally, I wanted to share them with you. Beyond Poplio, I've used these techniques to gather other footage that would otherwise be impractical. One major recent use was to gather footage of Dynamax Excellent Throws, where I was able to get over 30 excellent throws across the initial 5 Dynamax Pokemon and 10 excellent throws on Beldum without having to pay Niantic anything for additional max particles. I've also used these for the more recent Ponyta Community Day video, as well as silly things like the Meloetta or Zygarde excellent throw guides. So, what exactly are these techniques? The first is one you might have heard of. Zeruas are Pokemon that take the form of your buddy Pokemon when you encounter them in the wild. This is usually thought of just as a fun novelty. Haha, -ha, look at that Mega Deancey encounter, aren't I lucky? But these encounters are actually extremely useful for an excellent throw researcher, at least for some Pokemon, and I consider them the first form of practice mode. The reason is fairly obvious. To get the footage I needed of Poplio, for example, I could set a Poplio as my buddy, find a Zerua, and earn an encounter. With enough throwing skill and a little luck, I could record one or more excellent throws. Problem solved? Not really. There are some unfortunate shortcomings to this approach. First, while Zeruas are frequently a wild spawn, Zeruas also tend to be quite rare. Given that I usually want 10 recorded excellent throws for a video, I would likely need to find at least 10 Zeruas to achieve this. This is not practical in any reasonable amount of time. For Pokemon with inconsistent excellent throws, it gets even worse. If I'm only hitting an excellent throw a third of the time, I may need to encounter 30 or more Zeruas to get my 10 recorded excellent throws. A second serious issue is that Zerua isn't able to effectively imitate every Pokemon, at least not in a way that's useful for gathering excellent throw data. For very small buddy Pokemon, the Zerua imitation is labeled as huge and for very large buddy Pokemon, the Zerua imitation is labeled as tiny. Basically, this means that using Zerua imitations for practice only works for Pokemon that are naturally a fairly similar size to Zerua. Because tiny and huge Pokemon are different sizes, their excellent throws are not the same as the excellent throw on a normal version of that species, which means that gathered data from tiny and huge throws aren't useful for creating excellent throw guides. I was lucky enough that with Poplio as my buddy, the resulting Zerua encounter wasn't labeled as either tiny or huge, as Poplio and Zerua sizes appear to be similar enough. The way XXS and XXL works for most Pokemon is that every Pokemon has a range of heights that are considered normal, XL, XXL, XS, and XXS, defined in the game's data, with specific thresholds. If a Pokemon has a height lower than the XS lower bound, then it shows the tiny message at the beginning of its encounter and if it has a height higher than the XL upper bound, then it shows the huge message at the beginning of its encounter. For example, if a Poplio is less than 0.2 meters tall, then it is tiny, and if it's more than 0.6 meters tall, then it is huge. The way this interacts with Zeruas is a bit surprising. I believe that when Zeruas disguise as their buddy Pokemon, they keep their original Zerua height. You might expect that whether the tiny, huge, or no message is shown, depends on whether the Zerua's height falls between the XS lower bound and the XL upper bound of the imitated Pokemon. For example, if the Zerua's actual height is 0.77 meters and your buddy Pokemon is Poplio, which has XXL above 0.6 meters, then you would expect that the imitation Poplio should be labeled huge. In fact, I was all ready to explain how this system applies to Zerua, 
but to my surprise, it turns out that this isn't actually how Zerua encounters work at all. In this example, the Poplio encounter isn't labeled as huge, but the Kot Zerua has a height of 0.77 meters. By contrast, here's an example of an actual XXL Poplio that has a height of only 0.61 meters. If the normal XXL threshold had been used to label the imitation Poplio, it should have been shown as huge, because the Zerua's height of 0.77 meters is taller than the XXL Poplio threshold of 0.6 meters, but it was not. My theory is this. The Zerua tiny and huge labeling precedes the introduction of XXS and XXL to Pokemon Go by several months, so I suspect that Zerua encounters use some other threshold to determine whether tiny or huge is shown. For example, and this is only speculation, it might be the case that huge is only shown if the imitated Pokemon is twice as large as its species average, which in the case of Poplio would be 0.8 meters. Or it could be the case that if the normal size ranges of Zerua and the imitated Pokemon overlap at all, then the labeling is skipped. But those are just guesses. More research is needed here, unless I'm missing something obvious. All I know is that Zerua sizing is not as simple as I initially thought. You might be suspicious about whether a normal Zerua imitation of a Pokemon is actually exactly the same as the real Pokemon in terms of its throw. So here's some evidence. On the left is a real Poplio and on the right is a Zerua imitation of a Poplio. If I overlay them, we see that the Zerua imitation is in exactly the same location as the real Poplio. This isn't conclusive proof, but I think it's pretty good evidence that Zerua imitations require an identical throw to the imitated Pokemon. The bottom line is that while Zeruas are only useful for a subset of all available Pokemon, this technique was useful to me in recording Poplio footage and is useful for a wide range of medium-sized Pokemon of a vaguely similar size to Zerua. But the Zerua practice mode alone was not enough, since there was no way I'd be able to find enough to get enough recordings for my guide. So let's talk about the second practice mode, one that is useful in a different set of circumstances. To record Poplio excellent throws, I was able to use this technique in combination with the Zerua technique to get the footage I needed. This isn't a technique that I invented, although I suspect I might be the only one who uses it for practice. The basic idea is to use airplane mode on your phone during an encounter. Airplane mode disables the internet on your phone, so Pokemon Go is unable to send your catch attempt to the server. However, despite being disconnected, the game still allows you to make a single throw, after which the game freezes until an internet connection is re-established. What makes this useful is that if the game is closed before airplane mode is disabled, then it's as if the throw never occurred at all. We can take advantage of this to make effectively unlimited catch attempts on a single Pokemon. The number of attempts is somewhat limited in some cases, such as for wild Pokemon, who will despawn after 30 minutes. This technique isn't very practical for most players because every catch attempt involves an entire restart of the app which can be quite slow. In my case, it usually took more than 30 seconds between attempts to fully restart the game. But practicing this way is extremely helpful when spawns are rare or non-existent. Using this technique, I only had to find a single Zerua, and I was able to record more than 10 excellent throws from my Poplio Community Day video. It also works in some other surprising scenarios, such as in-person raid encounters and Dynamax encounters. I was able to use this technique to record over 30 excellent throws in the opening days of Dynamax encounters, and recorded 10 excellent throws on a Dynamax Beldum from only a single max battle. Due to limits on free collection of max particles, this amount of footage would otherwise be impossible to gather without giving Niantic money. For in-person raids, you need to be more cautious. You can restart the app and re-enter the encounter a few times as long as the raid hasn't left the gym. but even if the raid hasn't left the gym, after a fairly short amount of time, the game prevents you from re-entering the encounter. This is good for a few attempts, but is extremely risky if you care at all about actually catching the raided Pokemon. The airplane mode technique is better known to many players for a different and probably more practical purpose. When you have a research task, such as get three excellent throws in a row, you can use airplane mode to guarantee that the streak isn't broken. Do this by turning on airplane mode and then attempting the throw. If you get an excellent, disable airplane mode. If you fail to get an excellent, then restart the game before disabling airplane mode and your streak will be preserved. Trying to record a large number of excellent throws on every Pokemon is a challenge, 
and I hope this video has given you some insight into a few of the techniques that I use to make it a little bit easier, faster, and in some cases, less impossible. Let me know in the comments if you've ever used airplane mode to preserve an excellent throw streak. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.